Okay, happy weekend, folks. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves after a very positive market performance this week, mostly due to the rate cut celebrations that are going on. Uh, I believe it's a combination of institutionals loading up right after the news was confirmed. Uh, as I mentioned in a couple videos earlier this week, there were there was about an 85% likelihood that this decision by the U.S. Fed would come to fruition, and indeed that was the case. Uh, I wrote a nice article about it, or up to you to, to decide whether it's nice and useful, um, and it talks all about how uh, this first cut in about 4.5 years was highly anticipated and what the initial market reaction was with the prices of both stocks and crypto and even gold all surging right after and then correcting uh, directly after that once the crowd caught up to the news. Very, very normal uh, in terms of how markets tend to work. The savvy investors, the early adopters who, who learn about the news first, they send the prices up the way they want to. And then the crowd FOMOs in, assuming this is a positive story, which this was. So this was basically a classic buy the rumor, sell the news event. Uh, nothing new here. And now the question is, after all of the dust settles, which arguably it already kind of has, where are we going next? Uh, in my opinion, there are a few things we need to keep in mind. Uh, this is a chart that I just put up of about an hour ago uh, from the time of this video recording. And we're noticing a huge spike in positive commentary on social media compared to negative. And there have been three other instances this entire year where we had a ratio higher than where we currently are on this four hour candle. These are pretty tight granular timeframes that we're focusing on right now. In the previous three, we all saw upcoming tops. This one was maybe about a day before the actual local top occurred. This one was just after the local top uh, occurred. And then this one was almost right on top of it, maybe a few hours before. Um, it's, it's pretty reliable as an indicator. Nothing is for sure, obviously in crypto. And just like we say on all of our videos, we're not here to give investment advice because we don't know the future. We can simply predict in terms of probabilities and what the most likely outcomes are. And based on a three out of three sample size, we saw tops the last times that the, the crowd was so positive. Now, this is a little bit different because the circumstances are based around what has historically been a very bullish event. Uh, obviously, it hasn't happened in a while. The last time was March 15th, 2020, just as the pandemic was reaching the public consciousness and people were rightfully quite concerned and the Fed made some adjustments to foresee what kind of uh, very terrifying pandemic we were about to get into. So yes, we saw a nice rise after that the Fed made those adjustments back then, given about three to five weeks after that occurred. I remember April is when we um, really started to see a surge. So if we're basing it just on that, we could potentially see a little bit of a range for a little bit of a period of time while the market starts to calm down and not be quite so euphoric toward this news event. And after they do calm down and we start to see, you know, the normal range of positive versus negative sentiment, that's when we would likely start to see that climb that many of you are hoping for. Obviously not a guarantee, we could just rip up anyways, even with the crowd being euphoric. Uh, you can see in most cases, it dies down pretty quickly after you see the positive versus negative sentiment spike like this. And obviously with the weekend uh, transitioning right at the time of this video, it could already be happening because there's just less people online and, and less opportunity for people to show uh, the level of FOMO that they have. But keep in mind, this is a ratio, not a just a social volume spike. So the ratio of positive versus negative commentary could continue to be high, even if it's a lower volume over the weekend. Okay, looking at the prices and the social volume right now, 
as mentioned, it's mostly very high percentages. The biggest, the most notable asset is uh, Sui, which is up 45% over the past week. If you want to see some of my comments about it, I did a quick deep dive with Thinking Crypto on uh, another video on our YouTube channel. Just go to our videos and you'll see it posted yesterday. Besides that, BitTensor up 29%, Phantom up 30%, SEI up plus 18%, Avalanche up 11 and then Bitcoin over here up a modest 5%, but this is about a three and a half, almost four week high uh, level where we're at now. Ethereum up a little better at plus 6%. Many ETH holders are very pleased to see that it got just shy of the $2,600 level, I believe, before settling in at 2560 where it is now social volume wise actually not a huge spike in bitcoin talk compared to the previous week i expected more to be honest and i think that uh due to the performances of altcoins being the biggest beneficiaries from uh, from this news so far a lot of attention's immediately been turned to many alts out there Ethereum looking a little higher on the social volume end, up 14.3%. Stablecoins actually getting an increase. Solana having a, a nice rise in discussion rate. Remember, these aren't necessarily bullish. It just means there's more potential FOMO because there's mostly rises across crypto right now. So if you see a social volume rise while markets are rising, it's usually related to FOMO. But of course, all of these assets have individual stories that deserve deep dives that, you know, I could potentially do upon request if some of you would like to have some follow-ups on a few assets over the next week. Okay, besides that, let's look at some on-chain metrics for Bitcoin. Obviously, Bitcoin, despite not having the most, uh, you know, shocking increase in social volume right now, it's still going to be the asset that crypto is going to rely on for overall markets to grow. And for now, it looks like volume is pretty neutral. Transaction volume, pretty much in its normal range. I do see a bit of an uptick in transaction volume when converted to USD, but I don't think there's much to gather from this right now. Daily active addresses, however, has just finished today on a, actually I should re re refresh that, and it does look like it's at its highest level since late August. Call it about a three and a half week high in terms of the amount of unique addresses interacting on the network right now. Circulation also seeing about a four-ish week high right now. So yes, there is an increase in overall on-chain activity, which is in most cases a good thing for crypto. That said, it's happening while we're on Quite a rise over the past two weeks. Bitcoin's price is up around 16.5 to 17 percent. And considering that the on chain activity is spiking as there is arguably a potential top forming, that could be a sign that there's some profit taking going on. I would just be a bit cautious of that, even if it is not necessarily a local top. Now, the other thing we need to pay attention to is the fact that average traders that have interacted on the network over the past 30 days are up a little over 5% now. And on the 365 day time scale, they're up about 8.9% now. Both are back in the positive range. That's a bit of a caution signal that we are maybe starting to get a little overheated. This is a zero sum game crypto is no matter what asset you look at, no matter what time frame you look at, the averages of these MVRVs over the course of the asset's history is always going to fluctuate around 0%. So when you see them both high like this, that's concerning that we need some sort of cool down period to bring that average profit taking level of the average address, address back down to zero or potentially even below zero. Historically, you look at the last times both went into negative range, both the 30 day and the 360 30 day in orange, that is, and 365 day in teal. This was a bottom, this was a bottom, and this was a bottom. It's pretty reliable as an indicator. And uh, when you combine this with something like, you know, the positive versus negative sentiment, 
you get a pretty good idea of, of where markets are at any given time. They're two of my favorites, along with whale accumulation, which I'll get to in just a moment. Okay, besides MVRV, funding rates are very important right now just to see how euphoric the actual investing patterns are. And if we just look at BitMEX, it's quite neutral at the moment. And same with Binance, there were a few scatterings of high uh, ratios of longs versus short shorts, but it doesn't appear that it's anything special right now. So that's a good thing. The, the terrifying combination is if we really start to see, you know, this euphoria on social media combined with a lot of longs versus shorts. But you can see these shorts really helped propel Bitcoin upward. There were so many people betting against the price of Bitcoin, not even thinking it had a chance to recover to 60K. And then when it kind of finally did, the shorts cooled off and were replaced with more of a neutral, maybe very slightly bullish bias. Whale transactions, not much special here. They're kind of just biding their time. Uh, we'll look now at how the actual whale behavior is. And it's good news. Um, it's, it's definitely looking like, if I can make this axis just a little bigger, looking like they're continuing to accumulate, moving in the right direction. This is 10 plus BTC wallets. And they've gone over the past six months from holding 16.13 million BTC to 16.19. So that's an increase of 61.1K or so of total BTC held by wallets holding 10 or more BTC. That's a solid sign. Now, I've been saying this on previous weeks. We still need to see stable coins pick up because it's clear that they're exchanging their stables for more BTC right now. And that means that we're not necessarily getting more fiat and more overall currency coming from, you know, institutional bank accounts into crypto. That's the ultimate bullish signal. Nevertheless, I like to see this climb. If we really hone in on 10 to 10,000 BTC, it's actually a little more iffy. They've been moving down. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. I mean, this drop back here in late May was due to the Mt. Gox trustee transfers. And obviously that was just consolidation and the 10 plus BTCs, so addresses with more than 10K, they were still moving up overall. So I, I would look a little more into the 10 plus BTC is just a nice broad overview of how all sharks and whales are doing at any given time. This would be more of a niche focus that has more impact maybe after some of the dust settles and more time goes by since the Mt. Gox transfers. Nevertheless, I give this kind of a slightly bullish rating. The only reason it's not extremely, bu extremely bullish is because stable coins are not uh, being accumulated and uh, in indicating that more fiat is coming in and being placed into stables. Supply and exchanges is still very down. So, you know, one thing to look for is if we start to see a big spike like this, back in late July that indicated we were getting close to a top. That, it, that means that more coins are moving to exchanges and increasing the risk of a possible sell-off. Uh, total amount of holders. I still like this sign a lot. So we looked at shark and whale holdings, but the total amount of non-empty wallets right now is actually still moving down. Since September 8th, there's been a drop of about a little over 60,000 BTC wallets that, hel that held coins. Um, that is mostly due to how small, tiny micro wallets are, are behaving right now. They're the ones who dominate this line. There's a lot more micro wallets than there are whale wallets, and there always will be no matter what coin you look at. It's just way easier to make a micro wallet than put tens of millions of dollars that almost every mortal on this planet doesn't have uh, into a wallet. So with this said, you like generally to root for this line going down over a time. It's much more of a long-term indicator. Uh, there are plenty of points over the past six months where we've seen things move down and sometimes it moves up and then sometimes prices move down along with it. But eventually, especially if you see an aggressive drop in these non-empty wallets because retail traders are just bouncing and getting out, that usually will indicate that there's 
pun intended, a big bounce coming up for Bitcoin. So I like overall that we're moving slightly down and FOMO is at least not showing on this chart just yet. I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin starts to climb towards 65 or 70K over the next week or a couple weeks, we will probably start to see the total amount of holders grow again and then FOMO alerts will be firing off. But we're not there yet. Speaking of FOMO and the overall narratives that are being shown on crypto platforms right now, I love looking at this chart because it gives us an idea of how many people are mentioning round numbers uh, either below, at, or above our current levels. Beginning with 50K to 59K round numbers, mostly declining, uh, which obviously indicates that people are not too concerned about us slipping back to the 50Ks. 60Ks, obviously there was an uptick a couple days ago when we first breached 60K once again and the Fed cut rates and we kind of had a big crypto party for uh, 12 to 24 hours. But that's mostly just due to the fact that that's where prices are right now and that should be expected to come down. 70 to 79K, this is a good sign. Not really seeing a big uptick in these price level mentions. And uh, until that happens... You know, the likelihood of a, a huge local top is pretty limited. Um, we've seen plenty of examples where 70K to 79K was mentioned when we really weren't even that close to those price levels. And that's a clear sign of a top because people are, are daydreaming and excited about future prices and where they plan to sell, right? That's usually uh, when the crowd is starting to get a little too FOMO-y and a top forms. All right. Um, a few other things. I know plenty of you are interested in altcoins right now and which ones are seeing rising levels of network activity. Well, here's our activity matrix, which shows which projects out there are seeing higher than normal activity or lower than normal activity. And as you would imagine, after this surge we've seen over the past few days, most are seeing higher than usual activity. Uh, the question is, which are seeing the most out of all of these assets compared to the, their usuals. And that's where we can check out our leaderboard here. And we see plenty of big stories. Uh, I'll just focus on kind of the top 100 market caps. I know that there's Swipe and Marlin and Dogelon that are seeing interesting anomalies right now. But I'm really interested in things like this. Chainlink seeing the highest drop in mean dollar invested age today out of the past three months, that's a big deal. So if we go to link and we confirm it on Sandbase, and let's head down to mean dollar invested age. Yeah, so take a look at that, huge, huge drop. That indicates that a lot of older addresses just moved their coins back into circulation. So. In other words, this token age consumed spike combined with this drop in the average age of coins sitting in wallets on the Chainlink network, that indicates that some very old wallet, I, I could probably find it if I really did, did a lot of digging on our platform, but some older wallet decided to move, I would assume millions or tens of millions or potentially even hundreds of millions of dollars worth of link out of their wallet for the first time in a long time. Thus creating this big divot in the mean dollar invested age line that was mostly just going straight up since mid-July. So if we zoom out, look at the other times that this has happened. I didn't check this before the video, but it proves my point pretty well. Back in November, we see this big drop, prices rise. This one was perfect. In late January, there's suddenly a big drop combined with a token age consumed spike and just roughly over the next, we'll call it six to seven weeks, Chainlink's price rose by 35%. Yes, a lot of markets did well during this period, but Chainlink was a particular standout during this time. And this dormant movement could have very well sparked that rally. This one was more interesting. This was in mid-June and obviously prices were struggling during that time. But if 
uh, Bitcoin and, and uh, many of the top assets were doing better, I would have presumed that this would have led to a big bounce. That's why you have to always go back to Bitcoin and, and make sure you understand what the overall health looks like of the top asset in crypto. All right, so that's Chainlink. Um, USD coin is notable as showing a huge amount of coins moving off exchanges right now. Maybe a bit of a bad sign, in my opinion. I wouldn't say bad, but at least indicative that the buying from huge institutionals might be coming to an end for the time being. USDC is obviously most notable on Coinbase, so I wouldn't be surprised if it was a Coinbase move of uh, a massive amount of coins moving into a cold wallet for the time being. Other things to look at, uh, another chain link appearance here, seeing the most accumulation from holders with between 100,000 to a million dollars in their wallets. Uh, I like to look at this because it's kind of a large shark tier, small whale tier for most altcoins. Uh, I'd probably put it closer to a shark tier for chain link, but nevertheless, accumulation for that tier is a very strong sign. Bitcoin itself, as we mentioned, seeing its third highest day of address activity in the past three months. Great to see. We kind of know why. There's a lot of FOMO and, and celebration going on with the uh, announcement of the Fed cutting rates. Maker here seeing a huge amount of new wallets being created right now. I'd keep that in mind if you're a fan of Maker. Uh, the Graph seeing a huge spike in whale transactions. Also shout out to Quant seeing a huge spike as well. In terms of others, Injective Protocol, also another asset seeing a large amount of shark and whale accumulation right now. Interesting DAI is on this list too. So shark and whale, shark and whale accumulation of DAI might be going on at the moment. No top 100s in terms of huge social dominance at the moment, outside of their normal range at least. The graph, we mentioned uh, Quant also seeing a lot of coins moving off exchanges. Bitcoin Cash, another asset that has had a lot of dormant coins moving uh, out of stagnant wallets recently. And then finally, age consumed, similar to mean dollar invested age. It's calculated by looking at the total amount of coins multiplied by how old those wallets were that moved those coins. Uh, we already saw the chain link spike. Quant is there once again, and the graph is there once again, and Bitcoin Cash. So a lot of familiar names. Uh, keep these in mind if you're interested in altcoins. Note that hot networks don't always indicate bullishness, uh, especially if the coin recently just went on a huge run. You'll notice these rows here that represent the price changes in terms of one-day change, seven-day change, 30-day change, and I'm sorry, one day, uh, seven day, 30 and 90 day changes. And if you see a lot of green, that means they're performing well versus other assets. It doesn't just mean they're up. It means versus all other assets, they're outperforming. So for example, Phantom was the best performer out of all of these assets in the past week. That's why it's in bright green there. So Gollum, a lot of these networks that have very hot labels but are, are already up a lot, be a little weary because that might mean that the network is only firing off because of the fact that the, the asset's been doing so well. If the asset's kind of been mundane and performing you know, at about the level of the rest of the altcoin pack and then you suddenly see a huge spike in network activity, that's a solid sign. So Ergo's outperformed a little, for example, but its network activity is through the roof. So that could be something to look out for. Um, trying to find a few others just from eyeballing some of these uh, rainbow of colors here. And I'd say API and Aragon are two candidates because they've underperformed compared to the rest of the markets, yet their network is hotter than average. 0x, another good candidate. They've been pretty neutral compared to the rest of the markets. Loom would not be as good of a candidate because they've already been surging a lot. And then seeing all of this hot activity could mean there's actually profit taking going on. I know it's kind of a complex 
way to interpret it. This was kind of how my brain tried to understand the markets better and spot anomalies. Um, and yours, I'm sure, can work a bit differently. But let me know if this is clear to you and what I, I might be able to clear up. Maybe I can do another future video on this activity matrix I made soon. Uh, because, you know, the model builder is always the person who can explain it best. And I, I think it, it might be worth another deep dive soon. But anyways, I, I think in conclusion, the markets are probably going to see a bit of a cool down soon due to how aware the crowd is about this Fed rate cut party that's going on and how bullish that's supposed to be for crypto, thus diminishing the likelihood of markets being able to continue to climb at the rate they've been going for the past three to four weeks. So I wouldn't necessarily expect a huge correction because they're so euphoric, especially because, you know, the sharks and whales are continuing to accumulate and that can limit the downside of Bitcoin and crypto prices. But I wouldn't be surprised if we kind of start to cool down, maybe range a little in that 60 to 63K, maybe 64K range. But obviously things can change on a dime even over the weekend. This is a very exciting, more volatile time than usual right now for obvious reasons. So be safe out there. Try not to get too greedy and overreactive to big price swings. Uh, they're natural when we see big news like this. And um, we'll be sure to give you more updates in the near future, guys. Continue to follow us on our socials and we'll find the biggest anomalies that are worth your time. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a happy and healthy weekend. Talk to you soon.